What's up, YouTube? Ryan here. Welcome back to 1517 Films, where in every episode I'm always contending for the faith once, for all, delivered to the saints. And we're continuing the story of our faith with chapter two, The Problem of Evil. So if you like this concept, if you thought the last video was useful, you're definitely going to want to hang around because we've got 27 more that we're going to go through to determine if each single nuance of our faith is a confession of that faith, which is worth giving our lives for rather than being asked to deny. And today we are on chapter two. Chapter one, there is a God. And now what the world is going to do is the world is going to push us into chapter two with the problem of evil. Oh yeah, if there's a God and he's all powerful and all knowing and he's good, how can there be evil in the world? Oh, pfft. I blew your poor little Christian mind because if there's a good God, then, but there's evil in the world, then this God is allowing evil in the world, then this God isn't good. Ha <laughs> ha, got you, you dumb Christian. The story of our faith has answered the problem of evil in this world. And ultimately, you, dear Christian, if you want a simple answer as to why there is evil in this world, go look in a mirror. There's your answer. You, atheist, if you want to know why there is evil in this world, go look in a mirror. Evil is not a part of God's creation. It is the fault of mankind. And that brings us to chapter 2. There is a God. We are not him, but we'd really rather like to be. So we're going to go old school again. We're going to read the second chapter of our faith and we're going to discuss it and we're going to decide whether or not even this is a confession worth dying for. Chapter two, original sin. Our churches teach that since the fall of Adam, all who are naturally born are born with sin. That is without the fear of God, without trust in God and with the inclination to sin, called concupiscence. Concupiscence is a disease and original vice that is truly sin. It damns and brings eternal death on those who are not born anew through baptism in the Holy Spirit. Our churches condemn the Pelagians and others who deny that original depravity is sin, thus obscuring the glory of Christ's merit and benefits. Pelagians argue that a person can be justified before God by his own strength and reason. Concupiscence, that's a big word, isn't it? Whoop. What does concupiscence mean? Concupiscence means the inborn inclination to sin. So we are not sinners because we sin. As, as, as mainline American Protestantism and mainline American evangelicalism like to teach. We sin because we are sinners. The story of our faith confesses that from the moment we are conceived, we are sinners. At our very core, our very being, we are sinners. We are conceived and born in sin. We are sinful from the moment we are conceived. This is the disease of the human condition. Since the disobedience of Adam and Eve to choose for themselves to believe the words of a liar over the words of the living God that created them, they brought sin into this world. They became sinful. And in Adam, all die. Now, the, the majesty of God is that as we look out into this beautiful creation, as I aforementioned, that tells us that there's a God. We can definitely see a problem, can't we? Earthquakes, tornadoes, wildfires, animals ravaging each other and destroying each other to consume their flesh, or sometimes just out of spite. Humans killing each other to such an evil degree that we do it before they're even out of the womb. We are diseased. We are sick. We have an inborn virus, this concupiscence, this sin. And because we have this virus, we do 
what the virus causes us to do. We sin in thought, word, and deed. By the things that we do, by the things that we don't do, we sin. There is evil in this world, even though God created it good, because we decided not by faith to trust the words and promises of God, but to take it upon ourselves to be like God. If you want to know why there's evil in the world, as I said before, look in the mirror. I look in the mirror every day. I look in the mirror when I'm doing my hair. I look in the mirror when I'm washing my face. I look in the mirror when I'm brushing my teeth. I look in the mirror when I'm getting dressed. And if I'm not seeing in that mirror a reflection of what's wrong with this world, then there's something wrong with me. This is chapter two, and this is important because we cannot believe that original sin isn't sin. We can't believe that we, we're not originally sinful and we can somehow work out our salvation, that we can somehow earn the merits of God because then we make the cross nothing. And that is going to bring us into chapter 3. There is a God and we fall terribly short of his commandments and we are sinful from the moment we are conceived, eternally separated from this God. Chapter 3. God has an answer for sin. Is this confession that we are sinful, hard as it is to bear, something that is so critical to our Christian faith that this confession, like the previous one, that there's a God, is something that when challenged, we will say, no, this is true, and under pain of death, I will not let you take it away from me. There is a God. There is also evil in the world because of our concupiscence. But chapter 3 coming up, God has dealt with sin. Join me next time for chapter 3, and until next time, may God richly bless you in the grace and mercy won for you by Jesus' vicarious death on the cross for all of your sins. Your Highness, we have drawn up a confession of our faith, which I believe you will find blameless 